in today's video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at some of the rocks that we've collected in northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland in Australia. They were collected over a few rock handling trips with Benny and Polly. All right, cutting today, I am going to be cutting some of these rocks on my tile saw. This one's just a huge chunk of what looks to be rhyolite, but then you look in there and that nodule little bit has chalcedony going all through it. This is too big for the tile saw, but I'm gonna to attempt to do something and see how it works. I collected a little bit of amygdaloidal basalt, which is basalt that had gas bubbles trapped in it. It filled with silica rich waters and they created little agates or chalcedony nodules. I thought it could be cool to slice one of them up and I also have another piece I wanted to work on. I've been a bit hesitant to cut into him. I wanna get a nice flat on there, maybe even polish him up. We'll see. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. <laughs> now, my plan with this is, I wanna get this out. So, I cut like that. Not very square, but that's all right. It's something I can finish later on. So I'm gonna try and line those lines up. Give it another cut. There'll be a little bit left in there and then I'll show you where I'm up to. What I'm gonna do now is try and take Kim and put it in between there and give it a tap. Hey! <laughs> it came out. <laughs> It's not that the blade isn't going to be able to reach there, it's that when you have such an odd angle on the other big bits sticking out, it's gonna restrict how far that blade can reach in there. But that's the sucker I wanna get to. What are you gonna be doing in there? <laughs> All right, it worked, it worked. Hi, my friends, it was a little thunder egg. Wow, look in there. Goes right back to there. All right, I need to, I need to have a think. How am I going to cut that? I hope this isn't a fail. But I, I really think I'm just going to give it a nice slice there. Look, I guess that's how you learn. You just got to try. Ooh, all right. Sometimes things just work out perfectly. <laughs> wow. Just yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, with this guy, I'm gonna do a bit more to him. I'm feeling a little bit ambitious. I'm gonna try and make its base a little bit more level because I really like how it's, anyway. I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just sort of cleaning him up a bit to expose exactly what's going on inside without wasting too much. We'll see how he turns out a bit later. All right, let's cut the rest of them. I've gotten lucky today <laughs> with the cuts. You should see this one, it's amazing. I get, Whew, that was fun, that was so much fun. <laughs> All right, quick sneak peek at what they look like. And I'm gonna polish them. I'm not gonna show you the whole process because it's gonna take me a while. I love it. To polish these rocks, I'm just using an orbital sander with diamond pads. If you want to see exactly how I do that and what I use, I'll pop a little link up here to a video that I've done before that explains it in more detail.
Okay. I'm done. Let's look at them. All right, we'll start with this guy. His amygdaloidal basalt, which is little tiny agates trapped in their matrix or their host stone, which is basalt, and they're beautiful. And I was surprised it took a good polish. I wasn't sure. You can see the bit right in here where it hasn't polished as well. That's where the basalt has sort of degraded. But there's little tiny agates in there, are just amazing. Little blues, some water line down in there. Really cool. It's a funny shape, this one. I just sort of made him into like a pyramid with rough on the outside. But this one's just gonna be a little bit of a display in my crystal cabinet. All right, let's do this one. He gave me tons of grief. Shaking again. Honestly, I'm shaking because <laughs> I've been holding that putty polisher for a good four hours today. <laughs> All right, I love the combination of the, the water line and then where it meets up with the, the agate bands. Yeah, so he's, he's some water line and uh, there's little marks in there. They're not actually scratches on the surface. What they are, they're stress fractures from around this side where was closer to the surface where the, the rock was tumbling in the creek. The cool thing about this guy, he was just the off-cut piece. It looks beautiful in the sun. But I made him so that you could uh, stand him up. I really love those lines in there. Just beautiful. So pretty. Just amazing. These two gave me grief. <laughs> They're really hard to, to polish. I think a lot has to be said for getting those nice clean cuts when you first start because it'll save a lot of time in that polishing stage. This little nugget is just pretty color in there. I just basically gave him a rub on the saw, on those angles along where he naturally broke. But man, he's got some beautiful color in there. He's chalcedony, but I don't know if that's crystals on the inside or not. It's a funny formation. It's a really pretty orange color. And last but not least, this guy. Not sure why they call them thunder eggs. I like to imagine because it looks like they've captured lightning in them or something. But who knows? So this one I just tried to expose all of the chalcedony that was sitting inside it. And I went with rounded edges. Left the rough on top. And it's got some real cool looking lines happening in there. Patterns and stuff. That's natural. That's absolutely nuts. All in all, I'm just so happy with it. I think that that came out of that big thing. I hope you enjoyed it. They turned out really well. Um, I'm happy with them. Next time I'll be here hunting, I think. I think I'm gonna go have a beer. <laughs> thank you so much. I really, yeah, thank you. Bye.